All right, I'm gonna cut through the next couple really quickly because these are super simple and actually with when you're using ultrasound guidance can be very safe, not very complicated. Dorsentesis and paracentesis we can do with a static technique. It's pretty much as simple as find the fluid, look around for other structures, mostly solid organs that you don't wanna hit, avoid them, and then you perform your procedure. And we're not typically doing these in the hospital or in the emergency department for tiny little subtle fluid collections. It's usually for pretty significant fluid collections, so not terribly difficult to hit. So the chest may look like this. Again, we're just gonna figure out where the most accessible fluid pocket is. For the chest, we wanna examine it through inhalation and exhalation and make sure we're above the diaphragm and then we can mark that out and then just remind yourself once you've marked it out, aim your needle at the rib and then just slide over the top of it. Once you have fluid coming out, you can thread a catheter off. I usually do this from the lateral side because I'm usually leaving that catheter in for an hour or two at least, or maybe you're going to leave it in for a day or two to continuously drain, and the patients are more comfortable if you come from the side. That depends on your clinical scenario and some of your preferences. That's just my practice. But that's the chest. You find the fluid, just assure yourself that you're not near their spleen, their liver, or the kidney, and this is a procedure that shouldn't need a consultant or a radiologist or anyone to do this for you with ultrasound guidance at the bedside. You can do this as safely and as effectively as anyone. Paracentesis, pretty much the same thing. We're going to find our fluid pocket. We're going to make sure that none of the things we want to avoid are nearby and then we should be able to pretty easily stick that fluid and then drain as much off as we need to for the clinical scenario. So things we want to avoid, check out the bladder, make sure you're not close to it, liver, kidneys, spleen, and then some folks will talk about the inferior epigastric vessels. You definitely don't want to strike those. And some folks, and you'll see some literature about mapping them out and knowing exactly where they are before you stick peritoneal fluid. My practice is I find the best fluid pocket and then I just decrease the depth and make sure I don't see vessels in anywhere in the soft tissue close to where I'm going to stick. And so once I've decided, okay, this is my fluid pocket, I'll decrease the depth all the way to I'm just looking at soft tissue, look in two planes, and if I don't see vessels anywhere near there, then I'm going to go there. I don't necessarily map out the vessels every time. I just make sure they're not in my intended path. But again, with ultrasound guidance at the bedside, no need for specialists, no need to wait on consults, no need to wait till the next day. You can do this pretty quickly, safely, effectively, easily. So those are pretty straightforward.